An Israeli strike in northern Gaza killed at least 90 people today in a building where displaced Palestinians were sheltering, more than half of them women and children. For its part, the Israeli military says it is investigating reports of large-scale civilian casualties and maintains it makes every effort to minimize harm to the innocent. Meantime, in Ukraine, at least six people were injured following Russian air attacks in Kyiv today. It comes as Russia's ramping up its attacks on Ukraine's largest cities. Joining us live to discuss retired four-star Army General Barry McCaffrey, also an NBC News military analyst. General McCaffrey, thanks for being with us tonight. Good to be with you, George. I want to start with Israel. As you know, it's hit northern Gaza three times in recent days. It's also launched a deadly attack in eastern Lebanon yesterday, reportedly killing at least 60. Where do things stand in this Israel-Hamas war tonight? Well, the tragedy continues to unfold. Obviously, it's a humanitarian disaster in Gaza. There's uh, literally hundreds of thousands of refugees in southern Lebanon. There's 80,000 or more Israeli civilians who have been driven off the uh, their frontier uh, residences. Um, I think from a military perspective, Israel now has achieved tactical dominance over both Hamas, which is largely destroyed as an offensive capability, and Hezbollah by decapitating their leadership. They've also attacked Iran with a very sophisticated 100 aircraft strike that hit 20 targets and allege they have now knocked out all four of the Iranian S-300 anti-aircraft systems, leaving them even more open to subsequent Ira uh, Israeli strikes. The question is, does this situation lend itself uh, to a ceasefire? I think the whole notion of, for example, a two-state solution is nonsensical for 20 years. But how do we stop the fighting? There may be a window of opportunity facing us. Let's hope that you're right. Um, let's uh, talk about what's going on with Russia. As many as 10,000 North Korean troops are now in Russia. How will this impact the Ukraine war and how should the U.S. respond? Well, it's a very troubling uh, indication of, of the alliance of evil between Russia, China, sort of a moderate presence, uh, and North Korea and Iran. Uh, 10,000 uh, North Korean troops very likely to be followed by even more, uh, equipped by the Russians and then committed as cannon fodder. Uh, the Russians have taken horrendous casualties in excess of 400,000 killed and wounded. They're running out of people. So uh, North Korean intervention is not good news. Uh, I think what it may well prompt is an increased uh, commitment by the, certainly the NATO uh, allies uh, to providing enhanced support to Ukraine. But they're a smaller nation by far, with a smaller military, a smaller economy, and they're under great pressure. And they're all terrified, will Trump win and withdraw support uh, for Ukraine? I want to talk about domestic security now, leading up to the election. And I'm curious, is there any scenario in which you see President Biden deploying the National Guard after Election Day? What would that be, that scenario? And what are you expecting in the weeks leading up to the official certification? Chaos. I think uh, we're in a period of great uh, concern for the reliability of the electoral process. I think uh, the Republicans have pre-filed, in many cases, objections uh, to the validity of the vote in key states. Uh, the, the popular vote will probably go overwhelmingly, I assume, for Vice President Harris. The question is the seven swing states and their electors. There is worry on local law enforcement. This is primarily not a matter for the military to get involved in. Certainly nothing to do with the active armed forces. Uh, but National Guard forces are available to governors under state control, uh, not Title 11, uh, to provide security when required. I think the vote itself will probably be okay. It'll be the aftermath where there may be some concern. Well, six days, seven days away if you count today. General Barry McCaffrey, we so appreciate your time and your analysis tonight. Thank you. Good to be with you, Joyce.